If you want the freshest produce, you might just have to grow it yourself, and what better place than a kitchen garden? Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. Except for today, because I'm taking you on a tour of my brand new garden. Let's go. I'm so excited for you guys to see this. Come on. <laughs> Since before I moved to Connecticut, I've always dreamed about having my own kitchen garden where I can grow my vegetables, have all the varieties that I love, and just come outside and pick fresh herbs, fresh produce, and use them in all of my recipes. Our kitchen garden is right off of the kitchen and it consists of raised beds with a gravel path. This makes it so easy to just come out, kneel right down, and get to work. We have 10 boxes in our vegetable garden and this is our first year growing some of the varieties, but we have tomatoes, herbs, eggplants, leeks, and that's just to scratch the surface. These eggplants have been growing so fast. Just last week, they were like half the size. So they're just gonna be a bountiful harvest and I'm already thinking about ways to use them. One thing to remember when you plant your garden is you have to plant things that you love to eat. Not just things that you think are easy to grow or that look pretty, but things that you really enjoy. Our central beds are devoted to herbs and I love my fresh herbs. And look at this basil. This basil is beautiful, so happy, and what's better than walking through your garden and just, hmm, would you like some dill? I do, I love dill on everything, and now I don't have to like portion it out. I can just go into the garden, take some, and put it on my eggs in the morning, or have it with my salmon. This, my friends, is fresh oregano, and as you know, I'm part Greek, Oregano is like the main herb you have in Greek cooking, and it's part of my favorite recipe, which is avgo Hmm. I am so excited that we're growing chives. One of my favorite things to use, and the supermarket is sold out of them like almost all the time. I don't know what people are doing, but they're eating all of my chives. But now I have my own, and they're delicious. Let me know in the comments what your top garden plants would be. I'm very curious for next year when I'm planting. So we're all from California. We love our guacamole, all our Mexican food. And part of that has to have cilantro. I'm sorry, all the soap tasters out there probably don't like it, but I love it. And I need it in things like guacamole, in pozole, in my enchiladas. It has to be like sprinkled on everything and very liberally. Brian doesn't like it, so it's all for me. And that's totally fine. <laughs> So in this bed, we have onions, leeks. Leeks are one of my favorite things to eat. And celery. Right behind me, we have beets, we have peas, we have some cucumbers. There is one zucchini plant that got mixed in there by accident, but that's okay. And we also have some Brussels sprouts. And in this bed, we have our rainbow carrots, we have cabbages, and we have our eggplants, as well as one little baby tomato plant, which will be rocketing up and hopefully climbing that whole obelisk. If you're wondering what all these spiny guys are, they're not decorative, they're artichoke plants. Pretty soon, they're gonna be like this tall with one massive artichoke in the middle, a ring of like regular sized artichokes, and then they'll have baby artichokes below that are gonna be the kind that you would see like out of a can basically that people like preserve for later. I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions by the way about like planting a vegetable garden, like kind of how we did it, what the steps were, so please let me know in the comments and I'm gonna try and answer as many as possible. Do you hear that crunching sound? Instead of having like a dirt path or sand, we have pea stone and there's a couple reasons for that. One, I'm not tracking it in the house on my shoes like I would with all the dirt or sand or stuff like that. And two, it's like a clean look. I love the way it sounds. It's one of my ASMR favorite things is just to walk through the garden and see the plants and just like appreciate being outside. These little myrtle topiaries you see, which are so cute, came from our friend Anthony Belomo's store. And he's actually a garden designer and helped us plot out some of the garden and like decide how big the beds should be. And just took some of the design weight off of our shoulders so we could focus on the gardening stuff. Thank you, Anthony. I could not have done this all myself. Clearly, I'm in the kitchen most of the time or with the kids. So our good friend Nick 
executed this whole garden and made it come to life in no time. I'm so grateful to him. And he's here right now. Nick, come on over. Thank you so much, Nick. This was like the most amazing thing to see, like just come together so quickly and so perfectly. It was a fun project to do and everything looks wonderful. Can you tell us like just what is the benefit for people at home of having raised vegetable gardens? Sure, of course. Uh, a couple of advantages. You don't have to bring big machinery in mm -hmm. every year to till the garden, right. to prep it for the next season. Uh, another advantage is you're not totally bent over. Yes, my so knees. <laughs> it is easier to weed and to harvest and to enjoy the garden. Some people have really, really, I've seen tall ones like in my mom's neighborhood. They're like basically waist high, which I thought is kind of extreme because that's a lot of soil to pop, to pop into there, but no bending required at all. Correct. Uh, that is rabbit proof too. Oh, mm, interesting. <laughs> so for the lumber, we used cedar. It's going to age really well, but you can use different kinds as well. Of course. Uh, any wood is fine yeah. besides pressure treated. Uh, what's the problem with that? Well, the pressure treated is chemically enhanced oh, right. for longevity. Yes. And we don't want that leaching into the vegetables. Right. Because if you have an organic garden, you have to have organic soil too. So really, you should be starting with nice organic soil or get your soil tested at home because there could be just pollutants and things that you don't know about lurking underneath. It's very important if you're growing your own veggies. Can you take us through the espalier trees? Because one of the dreams that I had in this vegetable garden was having some espalier trees on the border and they are not easy to find. You tracked them down for us and we got like the perfect number even though we hadn't ordered them a year ahead of time, which a lot of people do. Well, it's a tree with horizontal branches mm -hmm. and the trunk would be shaved to eliminate most of them. Right. So what we'd like to look for are two lateral, uh -huh. pretty level branches. And these are beautiful examples of them. If you take a look here, we have some little offshoot branches and as they grow, they're gonna be trained like this. So they'll just be attached to a piece of bamboo normally, right? Correct. And then held in place. So as it grows, it'll be nice and straight and your espalier trees can grow together and just make a beautiful productive area of that space right next to your house. The nice thing is that the next time I make an apple pie or an apple tart, I can literally just go right outside of my kitchen door, take a few apples and bring them in. So this is gonna be just apple picking station 101. Nick, thank you so much for explaining some of the ins and outs of what to do for your own kitchen garden and for making my kitchen garden dreams come true. It's been a pleasure and we're thrilled that you love it. Hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have a big bushel of produce and you might have some of those squash blossoms. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> One last thing I forgot to show you. We have pepper plants in two of our beds. So we have jalapenos, which are perfect for guacamole. We have some sweet chili peppers, which are really great for nibbling on. And there are some Thai chili peppers too, which I love for some extra spicy dishes. I hope you get a chance to do some gardening of your own, be outside, grow your own veggies. And if you like this video, check out my farm playlist. I'll see you around.